NASCAR announces the lineup for the Chicago Street Race Music Festival, plus some Daytona 500 rides got announced where some prominent drivers will race full-time in 2024, and Natalie Decker is back in the news. What latest drama has stirred up around her? We will break it down. And is this all-in-one sports streaming service really going to be what NASCAR fans need, and how much is it going to cost a year? Hi, hi, hi. Push it, push it, push it, push it. Check your bike. Hell yeah! What's it cost for? Mate, can I push it in? Stop it, buddy. Wow! Yeah! yeah! Oh, yeah. Woo! Way to go, boys. One hell of a job, man. One hell of a job. Thank you so much. Hey gearheads and welcome on into a shifting gears for a Thursday, February 8th, 2024. I'm Alan Bailey. Lots of NASCAR news to get to. It has been a week. And of course, make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you don't go anywhere in 2024. And of course, you can always log on to arnrace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. I had to wear the What Happens on the Boulevard Stays on the Boulevard t-shirt that I picked up at the Clash uh, over this last weekend because... I know a lot of people are upset about the new Talladega logo. If you haven't seen it, this is the new Talladega logo. I actually like it. I think it's actually really sleek, modern, cool. I love the color scheme, obviously, and maybe I'm a little bit biased, but uh, I like it a lot. Never really a fan of the old Talladega logo. Everybody was like, oh, it was beautiful. Oh, it was perfect. Have you ever tried to print it on a t-shirt or tried to read it if you're a non-NASCAR fan? We, we just have image association fond memories of it but we'll get that back with the new one just back off nascar they're modernizing logos get over it but come after me in the comments down below i hated the old talladega logo now that that's out of the way and 90 percent of you probably rage quit this if you're over the age of 50 let's actually talk about nascar news namely the chicago street course we know that they're back for a second year in a row i'm really excited about it if you haven't noticed last year it kind of i don't want to say rained out but it was the biggest rainstorm that chicago had seen in like 100 years or something like that it was ridiculous just happens to be nascar weekend of course that's nascar's luck but this year they've once again announced their musical lineup and it includes keith urban the chain smokers the black keys and Laura and Elena over the course of two days out there. I love it. This is a really cool mixture. Honestly, I'm just, I'm hoping it gets in. I mean, the Chainsmokers were scheduled to uh, play last year and it rained out, unfortunately. And I'm really hoping it's not two years in a row, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Something that we reported on Shifting Gears weeks ago that finally became official this week is the fact that Raja Karuth is officially heading to the 71 Spire truck for the 2024 season full-time. HendrickCars.com is going to be on the truck for 10 races. The fact that Rick Hendrick is taking interest in this guy says all you need to know about him. He is, in my opinion, the real deal. He's one of those guys that is going from being an eye racer to real life, and he's put the time in in the sim, he's proven in the sim that he is capable and in my opinion he has proven on the racetrack he belongs he's not a sim racer he is a racer period and i do think he's going to win a truck race this year i anticipate he will i think he's going to make the postseason for the truck series this year and one day i expect to see him in the cup series winning races contending for championships that's how much i i feel like raj karuth is going to be a star in nascar and on top of that on Black Mamba Day, he's tweeting out things about how awesome Kobe Bryant was. I mean, this is a cool guy who clearly has his head in the right space. He's going to be great for this sport, and I cannot wait to watch his career flourish in the coming years. Keep an eye on Raja Karuth. Corey LaJoy going to be in the number seven truck at Daytona for Spire in the truck series. The seven truck is essentially going to be that all-star truck that's going to have a different rotation of Cup Series drivers and probably an Xfinity driver here or there in it, um, but as well as some development drivers, and I like that for them. Uh, they're going to be racing a three-truck organization over there, and putting LaJoy in that truck Gives it a good shot at winning Daytona, but it also brings some good sponsors along with it. This is a look at his truck for Daytona this year. I, I like it. I really do. Um, and again, Spire purchased the building and the assets of Kyle Busch Motorsports Truck Series program. Kyle Busch Motorsports is still in existence. They're just racing grassroots uh, with Brexton Bush and moved to a very, 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 very smaller facility uh, at uh, Kyle Busch's home compound. So honestly, I, I'm excited to see what Spire does in 2024 in the Truck Series. They should, in theory, be winning races and making the postseason. 
Daniel Suarez also going to be heading down to the Xfinity Series for the Daytona race uh, this year. He's going to be driving the number 14 Wendy's car. This is actually kind of a cool car, but it's interesting. It is a colleague prepared car, but it is listed as the SS Greenlight team that's going to be on this one. Fine. I mean, this is the the trend with colleague. I mean, they they do the work but don't get the credit. I mean, or or get the credit and don't do the work with some of their drivers. It's just it's a little all over the place. I've talked openly about my issues with colleague racing and how I feel like uh, within the next two years they're probably not going to be on the grid. I'm 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 seriously concerned about them. I I think that they're the team that's probably going to be selling one of their Cup Series charters here, uh, if not by the end of this year, sooner than that. Uh, with how they're scrambling looking for sponsor dollars over there and honestly i i kind of just want to see them drop back down to the xfinity series and be competitive down there because as soon as they took on a second charter and a second full-time team racing for a championship they kind of fell apart they've run out of sponsor dollars they're struggling over there maybe they turn it around but i don't know man i'm concerned Natalie Decker's in the news again, and I know you haters love to hate, but let's actually talk about this. She's going to be in the number 36 uh, DGM racing car at Daytona with Amp Fitness on the car. Uh, this was an interesting um, photo. I get what they were trying to do. It just doesn't come off as intimidating as I think that they were trying to do with the marketing team for this promo shot. But there was a little bit of drama around here on social media when fans noticed that one of her longtime sponsors jumped up into the Cup Series and sponsored the number 15, Kaz Grala, in the clash over the weekend. And... People were saying, oh, they stole her sponsor, and Natalie kind of fed into that on uh, Twitter slash X, saying, yes, there are people who play dirty in this sport. Ooh. Uh, listen, let me go on a little mini rant here about sponsors in NASCAR for Miss Decker. Sponsors have contracts. They're not lifetime, unless you're lucky enough to land one of those, uh, which you're not, uh, more often than not. And when that contract ends, the sponsor can go to another race team if they are not happy with the performance of their original race team and their original driver. In this case, clearly, they were not happy with Natalie Decker's on-track progress. And can you really blame them when she's having meltdowns and blow-ups on the radio and on the racetrack? I mean, not even being able to handle getting a push from a push truck after she wrecked her car. I mean, I think that she has a lot of maturing to do uh, off the racetrack before she gets back on the racetrack. Yes, I do think that she is capable of driving, but I think that the truck series and the last few starts that she's made has proven that she's racing over her head more often than not. I would love to see her succeed, not because she's a woman, but because she's a person with a chronic illness. She does have some medical issues that she's had since birth. She is getting them treated with NASCAR doctors and with her private doctors. And as far as I could tell, she's flourishing and good for her. My wife has a chronic illness. My sister-in-law has a chronic illness. It's something that is very near and dear to my heart. We have several friends who also have chronic illnesses. And it is a daily battle, daily struggle. And I don't mean getting up every morning is a struggle. I mean every hour, every minute of every day is a struggle. And as somebody who lives with somebody with a chronic illness, I would love to see Natalie Decker succeed in NASCAR. However, I do not think she has what it takes straight up. I think she's in over her head. I don't think that she has necessarily the skills to compete at the Xfinity and the Cup Series level. Maybe she can develop those skills, hone those skills, and compete in the Truck Series, but... I, I don't see her going far in NASCAR. I hope to see her succeed, but when you're pissing off sponsors and openly having uh, Twitter fights saying, yes, this sponsor burned me after a contract elapsed, and years later they sign with another driver and you're coming after them, it, it doesn't really make me want to sponsor them uh, or work with them. So best of luck to Miss Decker and her uh, entire team over there. Um, I wish them nothing but the best, but it's, it's going to be a tough sell when you're drivers having fights on uh, social media. The big sports streaming news that came out this week is the fact that ESPN Fox and Warner Brothers Discovery all collaborating and coming together to launch a brand new singular sports streaming service. 
The list of sports that will be on the new streaming service in the United States include the NFL, the UFL, the NBA, the WNBA, MLB, the NHL, thousands of games for college sports, including the ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, Big East, SEC, and 40 NAAA championship events, plus the NAAA men's and women's basketball tournaments and the college football playoffs. In golf, we're going to have the PGA Tour, the PGA Championship, the Masters, uh, as well as Wimbledon, the U.S. Open, and the Australian Open. You're going to have cycling and soccer as well, including the FIFA World Cup and U.S. soccer. You're also going to have uh, UFC and top rank combat sports. And for auto racing, a little peeve that auto racing is dead last on this list, but we're going to have Formula One, NASCAR, and the 24 Hours of Le Mans all on this singular streaming service. To say this is a massive deal is an understatement. This is historic, honestly, but it has people questioning how much is this service going to cost? What's it going to be called? When's it going to be launching? We know it's going to be launching sometime in fall of this year, and we know, at least initial reports, are that the monthly cost will be in the ballpark of 40 to $50 per household. $600 a year is not a small feat. That is, that's a lot. That's, that's a lot, a lot. That's, I'm blown away at that price tag. When I initially heard about it, I thought, oh, 20, 25 bucks a month. That's reasonable. But 50, huh? I mean, your cable at that point. There's been no mention of a DVR type feature where you can essentially go back and watch a race, uh, but I really hope that there is, and there is sort of a catalog of past sporting events and uh, current ones that are coming up and forthcoming because inevitably I would like to go back and rewatch things. Um, yes, a lot of sports, a lot of motor sports put up entire races on YouTube and things like that for free, but. Uh, inevitably, that's typically a week or two after the event. I'd like to come back from the LA Clash and just go ahead and pop on my streaming service uh, that night and watch the Clash. I still haven't watched the full playback of the Clash, but from what you all have told me about the broadcast, a lot of zoom in, a lot of weird camera angles from Fox. And oh, by the way, the crappy cartoon drivers are back this year after a lot of vocal outpour from fans on social media, even Fox employees uh, have said, yeah, we are not a fan of that. But Fox management seems to love it for some reason, even though they can't get their head out of their own ass. Hopefully they will. But let me know in the comments, are you going to be subscribing to this all-in-one sports streamer, whatever they end up calling it? I'm sure they're fighting over the name of it. It's probably going to be the ESPN Fox Disney Plus Max Force Go Toyota sponsored thing. Go. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. And speaking of which, let's go ahead and open up the mailbag. What happened to the SUV at the Clash? They ran out of time, straight up. I mean, they moved things around so that they could accommodate uh, the main events uh, for Saturday. And um, let me tell you, about 10 minutes after Daniel Suarez took the checkered flag for the NASCAR Mexico race, it started to rain. And then five minutes after that, it really started to rain to the point where we wouldn't have seen on-track activity at all. And at that point, we lost the racetrack until literally today, Thursday, it finally stopped raining. No joke. Yesterday, Wednesday, it was kind of patchy and we might have been able to get a race in, but Thursday is the first day that we've seen sunlight and we finally have seen the clouds part in Southern California and in the Los Angeles area. So, Inevitably, we didn't see the uh, EV demonstration on track that we were hoping for, but camera footage uh, from a live cam streamer um, at the Coliseum did catch images of a white and green uh, vehicle out there. I've seen it uh, but uh, in person, but I've been sworn to secrecy and I can't talk about it that much openly yet. Uh, I'm really excited to talk about it when it does come up uh, and when we're able to, but NASCAR is making some changes to the car, but it's an ongoing science project. They've been working on it for a few years now, and I'm actually really happy with what NASCAR is doing. Their biggest thing with this EV is that they don't want it to come off like Formula E, where you hear the on the racetrack. They don't want that. Lamont taught them that they want the big, booming American horsepower, and they're looking for uh, ways to replicate that and to have that sound come out of these vehicles. And I actually think they've come up with something pretty damn cool, but I can't say just yet. If NASCAR does go to Long Beach, how will the cup cars navigate the narrow straights and corners, including the last 
tight hairpin with so little runoff area. You're gonna have to single file out, hit the brakes, and make your way through there. And we've seen it on iRacing. The AFIXED uh, series has been racing um, in uh, at Long Beach with the Cup car, and a lot of people have been making that corner. And then you have a lot of not so talented drivers just sending it in there and not making the corner so i do think that they can make that corner i think that the track itself would be modified if we ever see a nascar race at long beach um i put it out there as an alternative uh to racing at the coliseum nascar wants to be in the southern california market in the 2025 season and at the moment there is no race uh between the clash or between fontana not being ready um that we'll see Los Angeles and Southern California fans uh, get a NASCAR race. And as somebody who lives in the Los Angeles area, that's greatly disappointing to me. So I hope to see it at Long Beach or at the Coliseum, something, some kind of race in the 2025 calendar year for the Los Angeles market. It's the biggest market NASCAR goes to. It's very, very, very important to them uh, for sponsors, for TV ad revenue that they are in this area. And I think they're going to figure something out for 2025, but they're still working on it. I thought the NASCAR Mexico Series race was slightly better also. They made the right call to move it to Saturday, but too bad the clash was moved to FS1 from Fox and the Mexico race FS2 from FS1. Yeah, that was kind of the downside of this whole thing. Because of the heat races being on FS1, there was that built-in time slot for TV to accommodate the clash. However, moving the race from big network Fox over to FS1 meant that you really 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 uh hurt the ratings unfortunately and i do think nascar was in a no-win situation here i did do think that they did come up with the best possible solution uh the ratings were in the 1.5 million uh range for the clash on saturday night um but that was with a four hour notice i mean if uh, they were able to promote that thing and really hype it up as a saturday race on fs1 i think it could have been 2.5 mil plus easily um same thing with being in the los angeles area let me straight up tell you when you hear something in los angeles hey come to this free event it takes you a couple hours to get anywhere and that's assuming you drop what you're doing and go to ask anyone to drop what they're doing in any capacity on the weekend and be somewhere in four hours i mean could you do it I don't think I could, honestly. You take away the fact that it takes two hours to get anywhere in the Los Angeles area. I, I think that that was a huge hindrance on it, really. Um, people have other things going on. It's right before a major rainstorm. So in a lot of cases, a lot of people in the Los Angeles area, the Southern California area, were doing things like boarding up windows and putting sandbags down and doing things like grocery shopping and supply runs before the storm hit. And Monday and Tuesday, the roads were extraordinarily empty because a lot of people stayed home on Monday and Tuesday in Los Angeles. And um, there was some damages. There was some deaths and a lot of the state lost power so it wasn't a small storm it was a big big issue here in los angeles the southern california area so kudos to nascar for making the right call i absolutely hate it uh that this hap th this keeps happening to nascar where it's not nascar's fault they put races in areas where there's a least likely amount of chance of rain and yet the rain comes down in literally historic waves this is the second largest uh winter storm that has ever hit the los angeles and southern california area what are the odds that it drops on the same weekend nascar's in town quick announcement uh the schedule of new video releases for the 2024 season we finally landed on something uh new videos will be coming out uh for nascar news every tuesday and thursday here for shifting gears on saturdays we're going to have a rotation of different uh videos that are coming out sometimes it'll be diecast download where we talk about diecast news what i've got i went to the la clash and you can see some new diecasts that are back there on the shelf uh we're going to be recapping those um um, this Saturday in particular with a new episode of Diecast Download, but sometimes it'll be a historic race um, or even news if there's a big news event, something on Saturday morning will be coming out. And on Sundays after the Cup Series race, you're going to see a race breakdown analysis video where we talk about what we saw over the weekend and kind of recap the weekend that was NASCAR. Uh, and that'll all be coming out here on the channel in the 2024 season. So make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you do not miss a video. And you can also always keep up with everything motorsports formula one nascar open wheel uh drag racing supercross motocross it's all going to be on arnrace.com you can log on right now arn the motorsports authority i want to thank you so much for watching all the way to the end i'm alan bailey we'll see you at the track